and breathe. You guys are not gonna believe what I just did. You're actually not gonna believe it when I tell you. I've recorded this video, this Q&A, already this morning, and I sat down with the memory card in my hand, about to put it in my laptop to edit. But before I did that, I went in the cupboard and got a dark square piece of chocolate out, which I shouldn't have been eating because I just had my breakfast. Why do I need that bit of chocolate? And I was eating the chocolate, and then I put the other half of the chocolate down on the table while having the memory card in my hand. You know what I'm gonna say, don't you? And because I was just doing something else on my laptop, I put the memory card in my mouth and I crunched on it. And I heard the crunch and I was like, I was all like, oh. I looked on the table, the chocolate was still there. I was like, oh shit. Wiped it, wiped it, wiped it. It's a 300 pound memory card. <laughs> yes. With all my footage on that I recorded this morning. And yeah, basically I broke it. 300 pound memory card with all my footage on. So I am recording this for the second time. Ah, this is just... For anyone who does YouTube as their sole thing, I really salute you because I couldn't deal with stuff like this happening. I mean, obviously, I mean, who eats, who puts a memory card in their mouth? Is this what happens when you're pregnant? Because I'm kind of worrying a bit now going forward. I'm 37 weeks in two days and I'm eating memory cards. Don't actually know whether to laugh or cry. I've also got the sniffles. I'm still not 100% with this horrible cold. It's now the third week. <clears throat> so if my voice sounds funny or I sound like I'm quite nasally, that's why. <laughs> Not doing very well here, am I? Anyway, okay. So welcome back to my YouTube, guys. In this video, I'm going to be answering all of your pregnancy-related questions, which I do have to apologise that it's taken me this long to do. We've been so busy with work stuff basically and I did realize I actually asked the first questions box in the middle of February and we are now the middle of April so it's taken me a while to get here but here we are so I really hope you enjoy this video it better be a good one so I've had a lot of questions come in which is absolutely amazing so thank you so much for sending all your questions and what I am going to try and do is separate the IVF ones from just the standard general questions because otherwise the video is going to be super long and really boring and I don't want you guys to get bored so in this video there's going to be no kind of like IVF questions and answers okay so let's just dive right in so I've got a few here that are about the first trimester and they're kind of similar so did you train in the first three months did you take a break from training in the first trimester I am now six weeks along and have no energy since what week of pregnancy did you start training and have you had any morning sickness? So, I did train in the first three months, but it wasn't very much. Because we did do IVF, there were certain parts of the process that I wasn't allowed to train because I needed to rest my body to give it the best possible chance of the embryo implanting. So, around six, uh, it was actually at my six week scan, I was signed off to start training again. And her words were, you're not ill, you're pregnant, go back and train. I was like, okay, all right. So yeah, I started training from six weeks. And then unfortunately from week seven to week 12 is when I felt these pregnancy symptoms. So I didn't literally be sick, but I had some, I probably had like around a handful of nausea days, which isn't very much within that time frame. But if any of you have had that, you know how horrible it is. Like you feel like the sickness is up to here and you feel like you're gonna be sick, but you're not being sick. It's a really weird feeling. I had loss of appetite, but then I had an increased appetite. I went off my food that I always eat my healthy food. I craved junk food, so I craved McDonald's all the time. And it was either don't eat or eat McDonald's, so obviously I needed to eat. Then I had, what else did I have, what else did I have? I had tiredness, I had loss of energy, so obviously on those days I wasn't able to train. Then I would have random times in the day, like 1pm, where I just needed to nap for two hours. That happened quite a few times. But then as soon as my 12-week scan came, those symptoms subsided completely and I was back to normal. So yeah, I have had a lot of people saying like, I'm on week seven, I'm on 
week six and I just feel like I've got no energy. Did you train? Because I think people think that I've trained the whole way through, which I actually haven't because of the IVF and obviously getting these pregnancy symptoms. It's all about listening to your body. Like you can't, when you're pregnant, it's so out of your control that you can't force your body. So all I would say is just listen to your body and if you need to rest and you need to eat McDonald's and you need to take a nap for three hours in the day, just do it. How is your anxiety during your pregnancy? So I didn't think I'd be that person who was anxious or nervous during my pregnancy, but I am totally that person during my pregnancy. Yeah, pregnancy anxiety is definitely a thing. And I would say I had it up until week 12, and then when you get the week 12 mark out of the way, like the scan, everything's good. Okay, but then you have it until week 12 to week 20, because then, the 20 scan is like the in-depth scan where they check everything. But also because in that time, up until like week 16, 17, you don't feel the baby move. Well, I, I didn't feel him moving. So it, I was always like, is he okay? And because we went to America as well, so I missed my 16 week scan, was it? Yeah, I missed my 16 week scan. So I was always thinking, is he okay? I can't feel him moving. I just want, I can't wait to start feeling him moving so I know he's okay. So then there was all of that anxiety around that. And then, yeah, you get the week 20 scan out of the way. But I don't know. For me, yeah, I've had, I mean, I think it's lessened as the time has gone on because now I feel him every day kicking me moving and I know that he's fine. And if I don't feel him moving, I just give a little, like, well, on this side where his foot is, I give a little push and then he like reacts back to me. So I know he's fine, but definitely in the beginning up until like week, around week 20, just after. Yeah, I definitely had the um, pregnancy anxiety. Will you be making a pre and postnatal plan? Yes, the prenatal plans are ready and I filmed all of the exercises. So they are gonna be going into the app. I think they're actually going into the app as we speak. So maybe by the time this video goes out, they might be launched. And then the postnatal ones, we need to wait until I am postnatal because I obviously need to do all of the exercises and film all of the exercises for that. So yeah, pre and postnatal plans coming very, very soon to the Strong Fitness app. Why did you hide your pregnancy for so long just to let everyone know anyway after some time? So this is a great question and a lot of people have asked us this. So there were a few reasons around this. First one being is we just wanted to have something between us, obviously we are on social media and we do put a lot of our lives out there on social media and this is, a very precious thing. Obviously we went through IVF as well and it was just nice having a secret. It was just nice to have nobody knowing. And then the second reason was because you guys know how social media works. People can be very critical and they wanna send you and comment you their unsolicited advice and unwanted opinions. And when you're pregnant, that is something that you don't want. Well, that was certainly something that I didn't want. So, because obviously I knew as well that women who weight train and are pregnant, oh, those comments, they come in thick and fast. And in at the beginning of a pregnancy, I think that, well, at the beginning of your first pregnancy, I think that could be a very horrible thing to deal with. And I didn't want to have to deal with that. So I just wanted to have time where I was training in peace and just not having to doubt myself and question myself because of people's outside, yeah, like unwanted opinions and stuff. So when we finally announced it at seven months, how did I hide it at seven months? Oh my God, because we pre-recorded so much content for you guys. But yeah, when we announced it at seven months, by that time, I was confident in what I was doing. I knew what I was doing was right for me and my baby. The doctors had told me, like, I was good. So by that point, when I, after I'd posted my first workout video, Pregnant, which got a lot of that kind of stuff on there. And I was like, ah, oh, like, I just want to educate you guys, like, who don't know about the benefits of some like a woman training through their pregnancy as long as they've been doing it before and they've been signed up by their doctor that first post got a lot of negativity but as the time has gone on it's disappeared i don't think i've got any negativity now on any of my workout posts which is good but yeah in a nutshell those are the reasons why we did that i also just wanted to see if it could be done because obviously a lot of people announce their pregnancies at 12 weeks and 
16 weeks at, at the push. And I just wanted to see if pushing it all the way to like seven months could be done as someone who's in the fitness space on social media who gives out so much value within fitness. I was just intrigued to see if we could do it, to be honest. Do you have any pregnancy accounts to follow? Yes, I do. I don't know them off the top of my head, but I have been following a lot of pregnancy accounts, like amazing ones, which I will just pop up here as I'm talking. They're really good to do your research on and they really kind of enlighten you to different things as well. How have you avoided stretch marks? What do you use on your belly? So this is a question that I've got asked a lot. And at 37 weeks, I can honestly say I'm pretty sure it's down to looking after my body for the last 15 years with good nutrition and good hydration. Because Google says, that if your mum has stretch marks, then you will get them. It says that it's hereditary and it says that it's genetics. So I've always looked at my mum, who's got loads of stretch marks over her stomach and thought, <clears throat> well, that's gonna be me. But up until this point, I haven't got any stretch marks. The only other thing that I've been using is this tissue oil. And this is from a family run company in the UK that I am not affiliated with at all. I just searched tissue oil on Google and their company came up. But it was recommended to me by a lady here in Dubai who does my facials and she was also pregnant at the time and obviously she knows about skin and she said don't bother with any of these high street creams that they tap like bio oil apparently that is just the worst one you can use it is completely shit apparently but ones like that that are just high street ones um she said don't use but use tissue oil and honestly this is the best thing that I have been using on my skin. I put it on in the morning and I put it on in the evening and sometimes during the day if I'm at home working. And when I put it on in the morning, by the afternoon, I still feel like my stomach is moisturized and hydrated and it just has a really nice soft feel into it. So yeah, I would 100% recommend this. Obviously I still have got like four weeks to go. Well, 37, 38, well, yeah, maybe three to four weeks to go depending if I go over. So obviously I am gonna get a bit bigger in that time, but at this present moment, I don't have any stretch marks. But then as well, like I've kept active, so I haven't really put on any unwanted weight. It's more so the baby, the uterus, the water weight. So I think that's obviously helped a lot as well. How much weight have you gained overall? When are you due? So I'm not gonna give my specific due date out because I feel like that's a little bit of added pressure, but I am due in May. And a lot of you will probably work out the rough kind of date that I'm due just by me saying I'm nearly 37 weeks pregnant. And I have gained around 16 kilos. <laughs> the heaviest I've literally ever been. And then the next question is, are you scared you won't be able to lose the weight you've put on? So for me, no, I am absolutely not scared because weight gain isn't permanent. And as long as you're consistent with your nutrition and you keep active, you're inevitably going to lose weight. It isn't permanent. So there's really nothing to be scared of, in my opinion, of gaining a bit of weight during pregnancy. And you need to gain a bit of weight because the baby needs the food and the nutrients. My goal through pregnancy isn't to be losing weight, you know? Obviously I'm gonna put a bit on. And you have those days where you just wanna eat more food than other days and you just gotta let yourself do it, in my opinion. But obviously I am keeping active through my pregnancy because I'm able to, so that helps a lot as well. Oh, I feel like I'm really nasally, guys. I'm so sorry. <sighs> How has it been emotionally to see your body change that much? So I thought that before I got pregnant, well, I kind of worried about myself before I got pregnant because I didn't know how I was gonna deal with my body changing and it being out of my control. But I can honestly say that I have enjoyed every single step of seeing my body change. It is so weird for me to say that because normally I've got my abs, I've got a lot of shape and you can see my muscle. But this whole pregnancy, <laughs> I haven't been consistent with training because we've been traveling for work a lot. Then we had Christmas, blah, blah, blah. So that's just something that's been out of my control. Then I've been ill for the last three weeks. So training has taken a backseat again. So I'm at a point now I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. I've lost a lot of my muscle. I've lost completely lost my shape up the top. Obviously I've gained a bit of fat, but I just don't care. Like I honestly don't care. I've, 
I just, I really enjoy being pregnant, but then I don't know, you know, I have had a really good easy pregnancy. So is that a lot to do with it? And yeah, I don't feel like I'm pregnant until I feel it moving. And obviously I get puffed out now, so I'm near the end. But all in all, I've had a really good pregnancy and I've just, I've just enjoyed, I've just enjoyed like everything about it. But I also think that is down to training through my pregnancy because training to me is more the mindset. It's always been more about the mental aspect more than the physical. Like the physical aspect is amazing, but I've always said that that's a bonus and a byproduct of eating well and training. For me, I get so much more mentally from training and this just proves it. But just because I'm training, it's putting me in a really good mindset and keeping me mentally strong. Are you going to have a normal birth or a C-section? So I am aiming to have a vaginal birth. I need to get my words right here because I don't want to offend anyone. Please don't come for me if I've said that wrong. But obviously, as we know, anything can happen with birth. And if I have to go in for an emergency C-section or I need to be induced, then I will be willing to do it. And I've opted for a water birth as well. I'm doing hypnobirthing and I also uh, wanna do it unmedicated. The only thing that I would like if I really need something is gas and air. So we'll see how it goes, but that's kind of like what I would like to do. But as I just said, anything can happen. And I think you've just gotta be, I'm not one of these people who will write their birth down birth down plan oh my god my brain is not working at the minute <laughs> i'm not one of these people who like i'm going to write my birth plan down and be like really upset if it doesn't go that way that's just not me if it doesn't go that way it is what it is does he move during your workouts yes he does and it is the weirdest feeling but obviously the most loveliest feeling but when i'm like doing a rep and he like does a big movement i'm just like ah! it's yeah but it's um obviously it's really nice how old are you? So I'm 35 and I'm 36 at the end of the year on the 28th of December, but I still feel like I'm 21. It's really weird, even though 35 isn't old, but like, I don't know. I still, I still feel like I'm 21 without a care in the world. And it's just weird. Age is just weird, I'm telling you. Like when I was like early 20s and I would think of a 35 year old, I'd think that was really old, but now that's me, but I don't feel old because it's not old. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you know what I'm trying to say. How has the OB care been while living in Dubai? So I would say it's been absolutely amazing. I cannot fault it at all. From our IVF process, our doctor was incredible, so attentive, so caring and supportive. All the way through until now, um, we've now changed hospitals because the IVF was done in a separate clinic. And the hospital that we're at now is actually called King's College Hospital. I know we have one of those in London. And the hospital is literally like a one minute or two minute at the most drive away from our house. And the doctor who I have right now, she is also super lovely. Anything I say like my wishes and everything are totally respected by her I've not once felt patronized or felt to, to, to like feel small or anything like that so it it really allows me to feel calm and relaxed and know that my wishes are being respected because obviously everyone has different wishes and different plans for their birth and yeah like I just I feel really confident I love the hospital the hospital is literally like a hotel it is it's just amazing. So I feel like that's really allowing me to look forward to my birth as well. So someone asked, will you be giving birth in the UK or Dubai? Why not the UK? So I feel like that comes off the back of the question I just answered. So obviously we're gonna be giving birth here in Dubai. And the reason for that is, well, all of the reasons that I just explained. I just personally feel like the healthcare is a lot better here. And that is just my opinion. Please don't shoot me. Romaine and I have had really bad experiences with the healthcare in the UK, but I also know people who have had really amazing experiences with the healthcare in the UK. So I'm just literally talking from our experience. Have you been weightlifting less weight now you're pregnant? So yeah, my weight has gone down in my training, but that's probably more so because I couldn't train properly at the beginning through the IVF process, so I lost a lot of strength in that part, and then obviously not being able to train from week six to week 12 probably, probably. So then I lost a lot of strength in that part. So naturally my weight that I'm lifting has gone down. Although I think I am still lifting like a good enough weight at an easy kind of pace. So like on my sumo deadlifts, I'm still lifting 
60 kilos. Usually I would lift 80 to 85 and all my squats. I actually hadn't done squats for so long before I was pregnant, for like a good couple of years. So I'm up to 50 on my squats, which I still think that's really good considering I haven't been training in squats for so many years. But they just feel good and they feel right for my body. And I've heard really good things about squatting for birth and labor, so. Where to buy maternity clothes and active wear, pregnancy friendly leggings. So I don't feel like I can really help you on this one guys, I'm really sorry, because I've been wearing my Lululemon Align leggings that I had before I got pregnant and I haven't had to size up in them. So I, I usually wear a size four and they're so stretchy that they're still going over the bump. And I do know that you can, so my, my mine are high waisted, but I know that you can get extra high waist as well there. So if you have a bigger bump, you can buy the extra high waist that goes wet more over and they're not pregnancy leggings they're just they're just extra high waist but they are really really expensive but I do feel like they are a good investment if you are pregnant because I've still got some of my Lululemons just the black ones from five years ago <laughs> and I've literally still got them and I still wear them to train in and then there is this other brand that I've seen floating around but I haven't tried them a because they're fucking expensive and they're more expensive than Lululemon and I thought Lululemon were expensive because they are expensive and number two they are are they an American based brand, I think? So to get them shipped here would have just cost me a fortune. And then if they didn't fit me to get them shipped back, it would have just been like extortionate. But they're called Vitality, but the look of them on the website look really nice. So I don't know if you guys are in America, maybe try them. I am gonna just check that name though, cause I'm pretty sure it's Vitality but let me just double check that. And then in regards to like my sports bras, I'm still wearing the same. I'm. I'm basically wearing the same size in everything, all of my clothes. I haven't um, had to size up. <coughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so next question. How difficult has been the pregnancy physically and how were you not scared of it and labor? So physically, I feel like towards the end, like from week 35, so literally two weeks ago, I have started to feel pregnant. I have really started to feel pregnant. Like I am getting so puffed out now from doing nothing. <laughs> and the putting on the trainers, the putting on the shoes thing, like sometimes I can do it, but through the day I feel heavy and sluggish where I eat and then I can't get down. I've also noticed that I've started to get swollen ankles and feet only a little bit, not, not a lot, only a little bit. I've had swollen hands now for the last probably like five weeks and I've had to stop wearing my replacement engagement and wedding ring that I got. You guys probably seen on my Instagram. That lasted for all of like two weeks. And then my hands started swelling up even more, but I can't even get them over my knuckle. And I'm like, bones don't grow. So what is that? Like, is like, there's no, I, I don't know. It's honestly the weirdest thing. I can't even get them over my knuckle. And they're big rings because like when I try my old rings on now, my like my, my wedding ring and engagement ring or my proper one, I'm like, how did that ever get on my finger? It, it literally comes down to like here, the top of my finger. So I'm yeah, really praying that this, um, this goes. And I've also noticed that I am getting really painful hands. It's the most randomest thing. If any of you guys get in the same, please tell me because I feel like I'm alone in this. So it happens during the night where not not the knuckle but you know the bone the joint like at the top of the finger all of those really hurt but it mainly hurts my right hand my left hand hurts a little bit but during the night i can't i can only get my hands to this position i can't make a fist and when i do that my joints really 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 hurt so yeah physically towards the end i feel like yeah this is when it gets tough um but I mean, is that really tough? It's not really that bad, is it, at the end of the day? <laughs> and then to answer the second part of this question, so I obviously, like I've just explained in one of the other answers, I was scared before pregnancy of my body changing. But regarding labor, I have my moments. All in all, I feel really positive and I feel really confident about labor. And I'm actually really curious and intrigued to see what labor feels like. And I feel like it's really gonna be a mental challenge for me. So in that respect, I'm really looking forward to it. But I do have my moments where I'm literally like, oh my God, this could be happening any moment. Like any day he could make his appearance. And then I get a bit wobbly because I'm like, 
it's the unknown, you know? I don't know what it's gonna feel like. My doula says, like, don't think of it as pain. Think of it as more like an intense feeling. And I think that would probably make more sense to me. So yeah, I'm kind of like, I feel confident and I feel uh, kind of excited to give birth as well, which might sound a bit weird. But like I said, for me, I feel like it's gonna be a real mental challenge. Like I wanna see if I can do it I'm medicated with gas and air if I need it, talking to myself and just having that strong mindset, you know? But only time will tell. I might be someone who just screams out the hospital down. <laughs> what pregnancy pillow do you use? So I have tried quite a few and I always go back to this one here. I would go get it from my bedroom, but getting up off this stool and going in there is just a mission for me right now and I'll get puffed out. So yeah, this is the one that I would use. It's 20 pound off Amazon. It goes all the way around the body and it really supports your body. Do you guys have a name for the baby? Yes, we have a name and we've had it since the beginning and we're really excited to see what you guys will think of it. But if you guys have any thoughts on what it could be, then leave a comment below because I'm intrigued to see if anyone can guess it. How many months pregnant are you? So I'm 37 weeks on Sunday. So in two days, I'm 37 weeks. Do you feel a difference in motivation to work out or desire to since being pregnant? Yes, I feel a difference. Um, usually I'm, I'm a very motivated person. I'm a very disciplined person. But since being pregnant, my motivation has just been like, eh. Sometimes I just can't be bothered to train, but I will go and train because I know it'll make me feel good. And Romain is helping with that because we train together. So he's really supporting me on that. But sometimes I'm just like, I can't be bothered. I just want to sit here and like eat sugary shit and just, yeah. But then I'm like, no, because I know how good it's going to make me feel. And I'm grateful that I can still train and be active. There's a lot of women that can't train through their pregnancies for various reasons, but I am someone who can and able to. So then that gives me a kick up the ass and then I get myself to the gym. <laughs> how do you work around your exhaustion with training? So I just listen to my body and if I feel tired, then I won't train. Like it is literally as simple as that. What is the most beautiful thing about being pregnant? So I would say obviously the whole journey for me has been the most magical experience so far. And just being able to feel him move and kick and see him at the scans is just, I think the whole process is the most beautiful thing. I don't think I have one thing actually, but feeling him kick and move is definitely, def definitely up there and just being able to grow a human. Like, I was always fascinated with pregnancy before, like on other women, because like the human body can literally grow another human inside. Like that, that is just wild to me. But now it is my own body. I am just like, wow, there is an actual person in my tummy and he's growing and he might have hair, he's got fingernails, he's got, it's just crazy. And the last question, what is the worst thing about being pregnant? So I, personally, I wouldn't say there's anything that is the worst. I wouldn't label it the worst, but what I would say is towards the end, it gets a little bit tiring and pregnancy really, really humbles you definitely towards the end. So yeah, there's nothing that's bad. There's nothing that's the worst for me because I've had a good pregnancy. I'm not, I'm talking about my experience, but yeah, I've just enjoyed the whole process to be honest. Oh my God, I finally record, right. That was the last question. I'm gonna go down, actually. I'm gonna take this memory card out right now and I'm gonna put it in there. I'm not gonna eat chocolate. I still can't believe I did that. That's a story to tell though, isn't it? But now we're like 300 pound down uh, and no memory card, which is great. <laughs> so yeah, that was the last question. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any more questions, please leave them below and I will reply. But thank you so much for all of your support over on Instagram in particular. It absolutely means the world and I feel like you ladies are really helping me through my DMs. Whenever I have a question or anything like that, you're really helping me with all of your answers. So yeah, please keep it coming. And yeah, I will see you in my next video. Imagine if that weren't recording. <laughs>